There's a whole bale in here, like a round bale. So possibly for the cows, not as easy to digest. Um, there's a lot more pull through. I don't think the quality will be that much different. So this cow here, the one behind, all summer she walked around and she had a tail sort of like held out like this. She carved fine and everything. There was nothing technically wrong with her. But we asked the vet, what did they think? And to be fair, they just said, oh, I don't know. It just didn't really have a clue. Without some kind of internal examination. Can't really tell us anything. So when we were scanning last week, we asked John, like, why does she always have a tail out? Anyway, she has a rip between, and she's never been carved either. She's just naturally carved. It's obviously occurred when she's carved at some point. She has a rip between the vagine and the rectum. Was that well behaved for YouTube? And that's why she's always got a tail out. And he said, there, she's doing it now. The problem with cows like that is often a bit of poop will get up the vagine bit. Anyway, and it causes infection. And that's how they end up going downhill. So needless to say, she isn't actually in calf. Um, so it's not the end of the world as she goes. She did have a, a fairly successful calving last year, which was absolutely fine. Um, and the calf was healthy and happy and got away all right. But yeah, it's just funny, those little cow stories that you don't necessarily get to figure out until you put your hand inside, you know, and have a feel. It's funny. They can't hear you again. Do, 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 do. What is that song? Do, 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 do. It is fairly relentless, isn't it? And boring. It is just what we do. The same thing, day in, day out. First of March, these sheep are coming in. And then this has got eight weeks to grow some grass for cows and calves to jump onto fresh. Can you imagine it yet? Because I can't. And this all needs shifting. Jesus Christ, look at this. Like when they were when they were haylage bales, they didn't do this. Do you ever had sheep? I did the tails a little bit too short. Look at this. I didn't know what I was doing and I just measured it on my finger like this. Because um, I thought that obviously yeah I, I just yeah it just covered the foof foof and and i didn't take into account really for any uh <laughs> growing and yeah so all of the first year clins have a short tail you live and learn don't you you do you live and learn and you know somebody who does nothing never makes a mistake so there you go if i'd have got someone else to do it all for me everything would have been perfect but as it stands i did it myself and i bashed on and i maybe did it wrong well, not wrong, they're fine. There's nothing wrong with them. They're just <laughs> fairly short. Any clinkers though, will they? Pulse through walk around of the ladies. Um, I have definitely taken to walking around now just to see if everybody stands up and moves slowly so I can keep an eye on everyone. Girls are all having snack. Snacks, snacks, snacks. It's just reminding me, it's been a really settled winter and they are the only two major branches that have dropped around the farm. That's it. A couple of years ago, I remember in February, the river going over three times in February in a row. And yeah, there's only been one named storm. The river hasn't gone over. I think it's just gone over once, just, but it's caused no damage. It wasn't an issue. It was just a bit of water. See here, the ground around the feeders. It's rock solid, like it's, there's no mud whatsoever, which is a bonus for the sheep's feet. Um, I don't know what it'd be like for grass growth though. Feeling some people are gonna be praying for rain shortly. Drought is not what we need. It does make you think twice about selling your second cut, doesn't it? Because we're not gonna use it. We were just gonna get rid. Do we get rid or do we keep it just in case this year that it's rubbish? How is Sheepy McSheepy, you ask? 
Here she is. All of you roast pork fans, I am sorry, I will no longer be having my roast pork. We have turned the Arga off. Got an electric bill yesterday, the, the Arga's electric and we got a bill yesterday and Roy had worked it out. We could actually eat for cheaper out every night. We're not going to obviously, but for cheaper than what that Arga costs to run, we could eat out every night. I am not bleating on, honestly I'm not. Um, but yeah, actually it's half a grand for a bit of electric. When we get solar panels one day, it'll be fine. S residential electricity, domestic tariff for your electricity. You are nearly as well off and don't get me wrong. I know things are still steep, but nearly as well off. We do Roy's mum and dad's electric and um, they've definitely been looked after. Small businesses, however, have not been looked after. When they announced all of this, uh, small businesses were meant to be capped at, I think it was 21.8 pence. And we all went, yay, that's amazing. Really good, that's great. That's a real buffer for us. We could work out our costs in the future, etc., etc. That was a total lie. Like, honestly, 100% an absolute outright lie. That was before the electricity companies had put their charges on. About 32 pence. So no wonder they're all posting record profits because that's the difference. It was meant to be at 21 and it's now at 32. So go, go figure that. We actually, um, at the time, we got an electricity bill come through at the same time we were sorting Roy's mum and dad's out. And we, we tried to get in touch with somebody to find out why they were so steep. We couldn't understand because we genuinely believed that it was gonna be capped at 21 pence and we didn't know what was happening. They just talk shite. They just talk absolute shite to pacify us. And then we all go, oh, all right, then let's forget about it. And then get an absolute massive shock. Like big, big businesses can absorb the costs. Little businesses like farmers, cafes, you know, print shops, anything like that, hairdressers. They just can't cope with it. And it, it makes you wonder why small businesses are going out of business. Would you advise against picking dogs up like they're babies? Or is that a valid training technique? Isn't it novel when you can go somewhere without blowing your tire up first? So we've had a leak on United Utilities side, by the way, which they refuse to come and look at because it's obviously not major enough for them. And it fills up basically um, the stop tap hole and the sheep have taken to drinking out of it instead of going to the trough because obviously it's not as high up and it's easier for them. It's easier for me. Move some bullocks this afternoon but before that i've got a lady coming to look at the apple trees and i know that sounds ridiculous but i put the sheep in the garden um in summer and when it got a bit sparse of food this took a liking to chomping on the trees and they've like debarked them all absolute disaster because it kills them so we're looking at um because I like the variety of trees that we've got. Looking at getting them grafted so that I can keep the the actual trees, do you know what I mean? Um, and any that are failing like dramatically, we can pull out and put new ones in. I want to turn the garden into more of an orchard. There is already one, two, three, four, five, six apple trees and two green gauge trees in there, but I would like to extend that further. Um, not for any reason other than I just like the apple trees and I like the way that the apples that fall feed the pigs. We eat the pigs. I like it. Yeah, it's just one of those nice things that you're able to do that you're very fortunate to be able to do on a farm. So the children and dogs take over the garden, if I'm honest. So I've just brought a dumpy bag in to tidy up. I'm not even going to turn the camera around because it looks like a literal bomb has gone off. It's not good. There's like bits of tractor, bits of trailers an old paddling pool, a couple of dumpy tubs, an old rocking horse, plastic for days. So yeah, best get started. We've got Frankie and Nile awardee. <laughs> They're out again. Someone's learned to open a gate. 
This is the third time now in two days. They think they are the business. Look at them. They found the molasses over there and they just stand licking it. Here they come. My brother's here um, and we've decided we're gonna try and chip some um, potatoes with the chipper and I don't mean like you know a chipping fish and chip shop chipper I mean like that chipper because why not oh my god basically looks like this potato <laughs> go on <What>? potato <laughs> go on go on no my voice doesn't go that way. potato when Cameron comes because he also likes to do really stupid stuff <laughs> you should see us on a night out together <laughs> we no. did handstands in a club last time <laughs> yeah we also got big couch <laughs> Massive chipping job on. Massive. Massive. This is my catcher. Ah, oh, Rose will do. That's my catcher. <laughs> oh, that's stunning! Stunning! <laughs> well, that tray worked well. I did say if you blink, you'll miss it. <laughs> I think the big. Jenna is stabbed. Oh, I'm going to drop it. <laughs> Hi, kids. I've just got to move these bullocks, like I was talking about this morning. They're actually being bullied by the Herefords, which is no good. So we've got the stock box, which we've paid for now, which is amazing because Joe from McQuirtus wasn't too fussed about us uh, settling the bill. They more wanted it out of the yard, to be honest. Um, we're going to run them in and we're going to take them to crack and thought, well, they'll have a bit more room and they'll be around stock more their size and stature and they'll be less likely to get bullied. It is smart, isn't it? Super pleased with this. I can show you now. Look at this. Yeah. Oh, on the back, right. Still there. 
it will be for the next 850 years until somebody uh, moves it and puts it in the bin. If I don't turn them around now, you lot are gonna laugh at me. These are four that we got off a friend of Roy's dad's. Um, they're not the same breed as our usual that we get from two places in the village. Um, be very tactful here. They are having a particularly upward spurt right now, but yeah, they are very slender and more on the crackhead side of things um, than the model side of things. You can see very, very clearly the difference between the Montbelliard as a breed um, and these guys. So here, can you see the backs of them? Can you see how level they are? Like if I walk along them, you can see the size of them. And yet these little ragamuffins, they're obviously very triangular in their ass, very square as a breed, not that wide on the back. Like look at the backs of them compared to the backs of these. Mm. The ads to buy them there were 180 quid and then little spreading was 60. So you can clearly see the, the price difference. See why there's a price difference as well. Just gonna hoi the pressure wash on, wash the wagon out. To get that on my head calling it a wagon. It's not a wagon, it's a trailer. Oh my God, look, you've hit a bird on your travels. And the feathers are stuck, you murderer. Time on the hips. I'm not falling out with you over snack. I'll have ice cream or you have crisps. If you're not sharing your crisps, I am not sharing my ice cream. I don't like ice cream. What's that to tea? Oh. Behave. Bye, kids. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.